Color, how are you? Hi, Mike. I'm great. How are you? Very good, thanks. And let me just say, it is an honor for a multitude of reasons to talk to you right now. One, as a writer, congratulations. Uh, congratulations oh, on everything. I'm I'm so glad that we finally get to talk to the people making these magical like <laughs> shows and 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 movies. Um, we we you know we haven't had the chance to do that in a while. And uh, talking to a showrunner and a writer as talented as yourself, finally being able to get that opportunity. Uh, that is that is big. So congratulations on all of that. And I'm so happy to to finally get a chance to talk to you. Oh, well, thank you so much. And I love your backdrop. <laughs> of course, of course. I had to represent. I mean, this is your work. And, and you know, I'm it's an honor to talk to you, the person that created this amazing show. Um, you know, um, the first thing that I have to ask is, you know, uh, predictably irrational. It's not technically something that you could look at and read and and create a tv show like this based on it's it's a very fact of the matter psychology book and i wanted to know when did this fall into your lap uh where did you really get the idea for alec and the rest of like the the story um all of this uh yeah talk about the origins of the irrational <laughs> oh my gosh well you know it's kind of a crazy story because um the um you know uh uh the the team that I work with on this, my two fellow executive producers on this um, are Mark Goffman and Sam Baum, both of whom are writers as well. And Mark um, is also a writer on this show. And um, they, you know, so it's, it's it, first of all, it's fabulous working with, you know, uh, producers who are also writers, you know, um, sometimes you work with non-writing producers and there, there's a, there's a mix of them. Some of them are awesome and some of them, you know, <laughs> so it's really great to work with fellow, uh, so our, our quote unquote non-writing producers are also writers. And they came to me with this, um, because, um, Mark actually, uh, has known Dan Ariely for many, many years, uh, who wrote the book and, um, Dan, uh, you know, and, and, and Mark and Sam felt like, there was something there that could make for, you know, a great procedural show because, um, you know, Dan himself does these kinds of, you know, not, he not only, you know, is is a professor um, and, you know, studies uh, social psychology, behavioral economics, you know, all of those things, but also, you know, kind of steps in and helps people in different kinds of situations. And so um, learning about that, um, they encouraged me to uh, watch some of his TED Talks and to go ahead and read the book. And I felt like there was something in there that just made for a great and different way to come into cases. I like to say cases or puzzles and not always crimes because, you know, while we will often deal with crimes, it is not always going to be, you know, it's not always going to be crimes uh, and it's not always going to be murders, I should say. You know, it is kind of a, you know, a, a puzzle of the week for him to solve. And he solves these, um, these uh, he, he answers questions using uh, behavioral economics and social psychology. And to me, that's probably the greatest mystery in the world is what's going on with a human being, you know, like, why <laughs> yeah. are they doing what they're doing? Why are they thinking what they're thinking? So to actually have this, this procedural where, uh, you know, uh, Alec is, is kind of exploring those mysteries. Uh, I found it fascinating and compelling from the very first episode, you know, um, just for, just from the standoff scene, you know, where he's talking to uh, the man with the baby, like, and he's breaking things down. I was just like, this is fascinating. Just like how the man's going to react to the helicopter, you know, offer and everything like that. Yeah, It's brilliantly well done. Um, so, so really well written on your part as, as well. Um, yeah. It, I, I think honestly, Dan, Dan's probably proud about how much you learned about like, behavioral psychology <laughs> and put to <the> screen. <laughs> well, definitely. I mean, and you know, like, um, you know, both, both one thing that that Dan and Alec have in common is they're both very good. They're they are both skilled at you know sort of ma masterminds of human behavior, if you will. <laughs> and you know they I like to think of this show as um, more of a why done it than a who done it. You know it has that yes. done aspect, of course. You know every episode, it's not the kind of show where you'll know from the beginning who did it necessarily. But um, you know we're much more concerned with questions of why once we find out who did it. It's okay, why did this person do it? How can we get them to confess or how can we get them to to stop or you know that sort of thing? So it's um yeah, it's kind of a kind of a, a different kind of structure a little bit than we're used to because often finding out who did it is not the end of the story. 
Absolutely. When you think about the greatest detective procedurals, Sherlock Holmes, Hercule Poirot, you know, it's always about the motive, right? And why people do what they do and the things that they do what they do. And this is this is exclusively what this show is about, which I found incredibly fascinating. Um, so soon you're going to get your doctorate, right? And you're going to become a no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but it's it's amazing so far. Um, I can't wait to see how the rest of the season unfolds. Um, can we talk about the magic of Jesse L. Martin and how charismatic always. he is? How <laughs> how brilliant he is? Uh, how did how did you find Jesse, or how did Jesse discover the project? And and you know, can you talk about the 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 process really of casting Alec because it's such a such a big and such a brilliant role as well? <laughs> oh my gosh, we we just got so so lucky. I mean, that's what I will say is we got like I've been a fan of Jesse L. Martin since Rent. I'm a I'm a Gen <laughs> Xer who loves Rent, <laughs> and um and so are all of us. By the way, Mark, Sam, and myself were just huge fans of Jesse's, and you know Jesse obviously has a history with NBC, having been on Law and Order for many years, and um you know we knew that the the Flash was starting to wrap up, and we were kind of like, well, you know, let's make an offer, like. We just shot in the dark, made an offer to Jesse Martin because we didn't know, we didn't, none of us knew him prior. Like, you know, we, we just, we were just fans, really. We were just like, you know, nerdy fans who were like, you know, you know, who would be perfect for this role is Jesse Martin. Do you think he would do it? You know, that was kind of the process was like, do you think we could, he would do it? And the casting people, um, who want, we have a wonderful casting director, Kim Coleman, and was like, let's ask him. And, um, you know, and so we we went to him with an offer. And um, uh, from my understanding, Jesse loved the script. Jesse and I have a very, very wonderful relationship working together on this project. And, um, you know, he, uh, you know, he was really interested in this role. Uh, it was a different kind of role for him, even in the procedural world. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Of course. I, you know, it's funny because he's he's played a lot of, of people on the right side of the law, of course, you know, which I love, uh, you know, having been a Flash fan myself, just watching him as Joe, this warm behavior that he carries into from the Flash also into the role of Alec because he's just a warm person, I would imagine, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's it's wonderful to see. And it's something that I, I truly love seeing in, in Alec. Um, and, and I can't see anyone better to, to take the law into his hands than, than someone like Jesse. So brilliant casting there. Um, I definitely want to talk about, you know, his, Alex chemistry with Marissa. It's definitely the will they won't they tension. And it's sort of like, you know, these guys split up. Should they have ever split up? I mean, we, we hear it in the first episode. They're kind of each other's end game. You know, I mean, like why, <laughs> why, you know, I mean, like they, they're so cute together and they so work together. And I think we're, we get a little bit of why obviously through these first three episodes, but, but honestly, our, I mean, we're rooting for them until the end, right? Like that's definitely what you guys want. You want us to, to love these guys. Um, yeah. You know, I, how did that come up? The relationship between them? I mean, I really wanted to explore, um, you know, I, I I really like um, to keep to keep this show grounded and human because Alec does almost seem kind of superhuman. And I liked um, the idea of dealing with somebody going through a divorce um, and a couple who's trying to navigate being divorced, you know, being separated but still work together, but still, you know, sort of have a cordial, appropriate working relationship and kind of having to wade through those waters seemed like a just, you know, just seemed like a very real thing that people have to go through and a very real, uh, you know, an honest thing for them to explore. And I think, um, you know, what we're going to see is a couple who um, was was so dedicated to their work that they were losing the relationship in the process and didn't even kind of realize it along the way. And, you know, it's causing them to separate. And Marissa is very much trying to actively move on and move forward. Um, and, you know, I think ultimately, you know, do I, 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 I'm rooting for them to get back together. So, um, you know, but I think they need to explore and see, they need to kind of figure out where they went wrong so that they don't repeat the same mistakes. That makes a lot of sense. And who better than a behavioral psychologist to actually kind of help figure that out? That's going to be that's going to be the kind of the sub mystery as well. That's kind of carrying through this arc is how these two can kind of fix each other. They're they're so sweet together. Honestly, they're really they really are cute and they make the best team like when they collaborate really on these cases, these puzzles. 
it's it i definitely want to see them get together at the end i think that they're end game and i mean i can't wait to see <laughs> that because it's going to feel so rewarding um but i do want to talk about i guess probably the biggest puzzle uh that jesse uh, sorry that that uh alec has to solve um which is which is really the fire you know um and all of that uh i mean when did when did the idea of this fire and the central mystery of the show you know are are you envisioning this being something that wraps up within like the mystery within a couple of seasons or do you think this is going to take the full full series uh to get from you know where we are today to a full resolution and satisfaction for alec I mean, as of now, this is the season long arc for this season, which is not to say that there won't be any lingering questions and that there won't be something else that spawns off this um, this mystery. But um, as as of now, we see this as um, kind of the big season one story as to at least answer some of those questions. I like to leave the audience at the end of the season with some satisfaction of, um, you know, uh, solving this mystery, especially this mystery of of Alex past, you know. And um, it's a very emotional case for both him and Marissa, because for him, obviously, it, you know, irrevocably, it, you know, ir- irrevocably, irrevocably, irreversibly, you know, changed his life um, and, you know, left him with scars, both physical and emotional. And, um, you know, and for Marissa, this was her uh, very first case as an FBI agent. It was a big test for her and the case in which she met him, who would become her husband. So, um you know, it's, it has high stakes for both of them and, uh, you know, and it's emotional for both of them. And that way, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good balance to have something, you know, sort of the emotional underpinnings going on while they are solving these case of the week stories, um, which um, they, you know, which may be very emotional cases in, at times, but, you know, which they maybe don't have a personal connection to always, um, but there's always a personal connection to that case that's um, running alongside. It makes me happy to hear that because a I like resolution and I'm very impatient and b <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think if it's going to contribute to the ultimate end game between Marissa and Alec, which you know again we it's going to help them come closer, I guess um, potentially come back together. I'm all for that, you know. Honestly, <laughs> um, I have to say uh, the cast just I, I I you know I know that they're going through a lot right now, but they've just done some tremendous work. Uh, throughout these these three episodes and I want to give it up for them for fighting the good fight but also for for being such amazing talents on screen and also off screen uh and and you know there's there's not many people that could pull off burn scars and still look handsome as hell so Jesse you know congratulations to him for that. <laughs> yes um I I'll ultimately I just want to put it out there that this is such a wonderful show I know that it's doing really well people are loving it um, and I'm I'm glad that I got a chance to talk to you because uh, this is this is going to be one of those shows that I think we're going to see for for a good long time. I don't want to jinx it, but you know, I mean, like it's. I think I I I can see myself like loving this for for forever with such a likable crew and with such sharp writing that you've you've contributed to. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Lectures, fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC in full color. You see me, the hard knock.